Okay, so today we're doing this. Uh, this is going to involve two skills that we have. It's just a matter of recognizing, remembering what it is that we could do with this. So I'll open the floor just for commentary. Uh, if anybody thinks you can answer one of these, go ahead and answer it. If anybody has an idea of something you think we need to do, I'll take that advice. Uh, but there's going to be a two-step plan to this. Does anybody either have an idea of something we're going to have to do or have an idea of what any of these answers is going to turn out to be? Right, 25% of 40 is 10. It is. The question is, how, how can we do this? We could. Uh, how could you make the percents a fraction? Um, you get it all percentage of okay, that's different than what you said. We might be able to do that too. But let's talk about that first idea. If we did want to make a percentage of fraction, how can we make a percentage of fraction? Put it above 100. Put it above how can we make this a fraction? Put it above a 1. We could do something with that. I'm not going to. That would be okay. That's a good idea. I think there's an easier idea. Uh, but we can make percentages fractions. We can make whole numbers fractions by putting them over 1, and then there would be a way to do the math with that. I like the other idea better. What was your other idea then, you said? Yeah. So one thing we're going to need to do today, and if we do this in the quickest way, is move the decimal left two places. That is a thing. Uh, so instead of 40%, you could make it 0.25. Uh, you're making fractions again. We just decided we weren't going to make fractions. 0.4. You can make that maybe like a 0.4. You could make something like this, maybe uh, 0 0.07. 0 0.07. We could make something like this, uh, 0.25. That's the thing we could do. We could get the decimal loop moving left twice as a choice. Uh, one thing we have to address in these questions are there's these percentages. So we have two ways we can address percentages, which is put them over 100 or move them left to. And I think the clearer choice of what's easier is to move it left to. Uh, so that's going to be a thing. There's another thing in these problems that we're going to have to do. There's a key word in the question that goes back to the third day of school. Other than percentages, what other thing in here has something to do with math knowledge that you possess? Of means... Multiply. Okay. So at some point in this problem, we're going to need to multiply. At some point in this problem, we're going to need to move left too. It doesn't matter which thing you do first. But if you want to go easy road, is it easier to multiply whole numbers or is it easier to multiply decimals? Whole numbers. So it's probably going to be easier for us if we multiply first or if we go moving decimals around first. Multiply first. If you multiply first while they're whole numbers, that's probably easier. And then we can move the decimal two places left later. That's probably the easiest way to do it. But like I said a few other days, in this age of your math, and if you can put the chairs down on the floor and not be leaning in the chairs, you're going to hurt yourself or the chairs, and the chair doesn't deserve it. Although you might uh, if you make that choice. But I'd rather neither the chair nor you get injured. Um, but if we want to keep this, uh, uh, oh, sorry, off track. Uh, a lot of stuff in math these days, there's not just like one way to do these problems. There's a lot of ways. You come up with a way that works for you, it's fine. Uh, there's nothing wrong with putting these over 100 and then multiplying. There's nothing wrong with moving the decimal first and then multiplying. But if you want my opinion, the easiest way to do this is multiply first and then worry about the decimal. So here, if you take 25 times 40, 25 times 40 is like 25 times 4, which is 100. 100, but with a bonus 0. So when you first multiply, you're thinking about 1,000. Where's the decimal in this? It's invisible, but where is it? 
it's at the very end. And if you bounce it left twice, that's our way, you could get 10. You might have done that another way, that's okay. If we all get 10, we're all good. But if we want a system that's easy and will always work, that's the best I can probably give you. Ball by the numbers, and after you did that, slide them left twice and we're good. If you forget that and you want to create your own path out of that, as long as you get a multiplication going, and as long as you get the percentage taken care of, you're probably fine. Uh, so let's backtrack. If we go up here, multiply these numbers. 36. Well, multiply the numbers first. Forty times nine. For a moment, most people would think of thirty-six hundred. But four times the nine is a thirty-six. There's a couple bonus zeros to get us the thirty-six hundred. But yes, the final answer is thirty-six. Once we bounce that decimal left twice. Here for the multiplication. What would we get if we multiply that stuff? Two thousand one hundred. Final answer though, 21. On these, wouldn't you notice happened? I've got a shortcut too up my sleeve. It works for these, it won't work for the next one. They all had zeros. And what ended up happening to these? We just get zeros canceled away. So one alternative to moving the decimal left two places is to drop two zeros. If you want to see, if you see zeros, you can drop them. So if I want to go rewind and do this in the fastest, fastest way possible, I would drop a zero from this. I would drop a zero from that. That took the place of moving the decimal left twice, and just four times nine is 36. That's the quickest thing I could offer you. Here, I could drop two zeros from this number now. 7 times 3 is 21. I already dropped my two zeros. I'm not worried about that. Something like this, I could drop one zero now and hope that there's another zero to drop later, and there will be. If I drop one zero now, 25 times 4 is 100, and then drop another zero later. It still gets me 10. At some point, if we can drop two zeros, either one from each number, or two from a number, or one now, one later, if you can drop two zeros, that takes the place of moving decimals. That doesn't always work though. Like on this, there are no zeros. You're just stuck. You multiply those numbers, what are those? It is 273. There's still no zeros. So we have to settle for there's an invisible decimal here to glide left twice, and that makes 2.73. In day-to-day -day adult life, math like this is done like almost every day of an adult human's life. Uh, where do people do like percentages of things pretty much every day in an adult life? Maybe banking. Banking you probably don't do every day of your life, but yeah, percentages and stuff like this does affect banking. Like if you open an account and they're going to give you 3% interest on your thing, that's true. But there's other things that adult life, it's like every single day you're dealing with percentages of big numbers, bigger numbers. Can anybody think of a place in adult life percentages take pretty much every day come in. Maybe. Probably not. There's a thing with percentages that affects pretty much every purchase that a person makes. Taxes. What kind of, like, what? Sales tax. Like in Allegheny County, what is the sales tax in Allegheny County? Anybody know? You'll know when you're spending your own money. 5%? No, it's in that neighborhood. 7%. 7%. Everything you buy, there's 7% tax on that. So you show up at the cash register, and your bill is going to be like $14. They don't expect $14. They're going to take 7% of $14 and come up with 98 more cents, and you're paying $14.98. Even though when you walk around the store and everything added up to be 14, the cashier is going to say 14.98, please. Uh, if you go to Westmoreland County, it's not seven. You get a little cheaper break. Anybody know what Westmoreland's about? Most of the other counties around us are Westmoreland's rate. They do six. Allegheny County does seven. Uh, 
Another place in the grown-up world you might deal with percentages. Depends on your family. Some families do this a couple times a week. Some families maybe once a week. Some families once a month. Some families it might be only for special occasions. Just depends on how your family lives your life. What's a, a place you might go the percentages come into play? Tips. Tips. You know, you go to a restaurant or do something like that that involves a tip. Uh, you know, you, you get the bill. It's supposed to be for fourteen dollars. The tax takes you to fourteen ninety eight. Your waiter or waitress is going to be really mad if you give them fourteen ninety eight. Okay, they're expecting you to be like, okay, I got pretty good service. Maybe twenty percent tip. Figure out twenty percent of the thing. Give them a couple bucks at least. Uh, but yeah, the math like this happens a good bit. So the system is. You've got to make percentages into decimals if you want this to be the quickest way, in my opinion. But you could do fractions if you're more comfortable with fractions. Uh, but, but multiplication is involved. You're going to multiply stuff. So uh, the cash register is just doing that. The cash register is automatically multiplying a 7% times whatever the bill was and adding it on to you. But if you get the tip, sometimes you have to figure that yourself. And sometimes people get a little bit like, ah, how much did I give? I don't know, I can't do math, I don't, want to, I don't want to look bad, but I don't want to give this person a ridiculous tip either and give away all my money, but I can't do math anymore. Uh, so now you've got the math, you can help your family out, be like, hey mom, bust out your phone calculator, hey dad, bust out your phone calculator, make that percentage of decimal and multiply those numbers, that tells you what how to give the waiter. Um, well, that's our deal today, multiply, move decimal left twice. If you see zeros, you can drop them, that's a shortcut. You don't always see zero. Question at all about this game plan? Okay, there's a whole set of this. We're in the back of the book again. We just finished set MM. If you left the book open, you're good. You're on set uh, NN. So set NN is our homework for next time for Monday. And then I had that extra credit assignment I told you you could do on LL. So if you did the LL, I'll take that. If you didn't, I'm still taking it Monday. But Monday's the end of the road for uh, set LL. Anything you have that's good, send it, and we can hit the stop button. Oh, yeah, you should.